Welcome to Renton United Methodist Church Ash Wednesday service. I'm Pastor Michelle and today Pastor Kathy and I want to invite you to join us as we begin our journey towards Jerusalem. This is a journey and season of discernment. During this season we will ask who am I with God and who are we together with God? The world around us continues to change, and so must we. Change begins first in our hearts. Today and on Sunday, we will also ask, how do we hear from God, and what is God saying to me and to us? As we begin this season of discernment, I invite each of us to be in a prayerful and reflective mood. May we enter this journey and this season with a clear mind and an open heart. Please pray with me. Come Holy Spirit, let us find our rest in you. As we begin this season of Lent, we step out of the fast moving current of daily life. During this holy season, may we choose stillness over action. May we strive to listen then to speak. Help us to slow our pace and quiet our minds, that our spirit may draw closer to you. Bless our worship with your presence and fill our minds with new wisdom, that we may rise up with you at Easter and lift others in your name. Amen. A poem entitled Lent by Steve Garnus Holmes. Lent is when we go downstairs down into the basement of our souls, into the dark, dingy, dirty places, and clear out the junk we need to get rid of. In Lent, we don't need to beat ourselves up. We need to lighten our load, bag up those fears and desires that are leaking all over everything, take our guilt and shame out to the curb. It's not easy to lay our hands on broken things, to look deep into the gummed up works. That's why Jesus shines with his light, shines so we can see our way down into the dark, see to lift up the junk and hand it over so he can haul it out into the light of the dumpster. The light Jesus shines is good with dark places, so we know even from the deepest hole down there, we'll come out. The light will lead us. We'll be okay. Mucking around down there, we get dirty, and we come up with grime on our hands and ashes on our foreheads for everybody to see. And we're free of all that blame and disappointment. And the darkest, deepest cellar hole becomes an empty tomb. Our scripture lesson today is from Isaiah 43, verses 18 and 19. Do not remember the former things or consider the things of old. I am about to do a new thing. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. This reflection comes from Richard Rohr's meditation from the Center for Action and Contemplation. In his excerpt from his 1980s talk, The Four Gospels, Father Richard Rohr reflects on what it means to follow Jesus. Immediately after the temptation in the desert, Jesus goes out to Galilee, and there he begins to preach. His initial preaching is summed up in the verse, repent, for the kingdom of God is near. It is a theologically packed statement. What does the word repent mean? First of all, it doesn't mean to beat yourself up or to feel bad about ourselves. Repent or metanoia in Greek, means to turn around, to change. The first word that comes out of Jesus's mouth is change. Be willing 
to change. People who are not willing to change are not willing to turn away from themselves. What we're in love with usually is not God. We're in love with our way of thinking, our way of explaining, our way of doing. One of the greatest ways to protect ourselves from God and to protect ourselves from truth and grace is simply to buy into some kind of cheap conventionalism and call it tradition. But the great traditions always call people on a journey of faith to keep changing. There's no other way this human personality can open up to all that God is asking of us. There's no way we can open up to all that we have to learn, all that we have to experience, unless we're willing to let go of the idols of yesterday and the idols of today. The best protection from the next word of God is the last word of God. We take what we heard from God last year and we build a whole system around it. And then we sit there for the rest of our lives. Immediately after he begins his teaching, Jesus calls his first four disciples. The way I see people transform today sure doesn't happen this quickly. Jesus just says, follow me. And immediately they left their nets and followed him. Now, maybe it happened that way. I don't want to say it didn't, but what I do want to say is that a true disciple will have that kind of readiness. I'd be more likely to think that this was maybe a process of some conversations over a few weeks. And Jesus said, hey, I'm into something. Do you want to be part of it? Let's go. I hope we realize that we're all called to discipleship the same way. We hope that the point comes when we're ready to let go of our nets. And what are our nets? Our security systems. Fishing is Simon and Andrew's economic livelihood, and Jesus says to let go of it. He says, I'm gonna teach you how to fish in a new way, to fish for people. What he means is that he's going to give them a new vocation. What is God asking us to do? Where is God asking us to go? And now we would like to invite you to observe our Lenten discipline. Dear friends, as we begin this new season, we invite you to engage in reflection and discernment as we change our hearts. It is the custom on Ash Wednesday to impose ashes on our foreheads or hands to symbolize the journey and the changes that we are making. Ashes are a sign of purification. As fire burns, it can separate what is valuable from what is valueless, just as an assayer's fire can separate base metal from ore. In this same way, these ashes are pure. They are a symbol of the new space that is now present within us for a new life. Let us claim the new life Jesus offers to us. Let us give thanks over the ashes. Merciful God, you ask us to rend our hearts, not our clothing. Bless these ashes and walk with us on our journey. Help us to hear your voice. May these ashes be a symbol of our letting go of what is valueless, so that we may mine the treasure that you have placed within us. Amen. Today, this Wednesday, February 22nd, we have two opportunities at our church building where you can come and receive the ashes. 
Pastor Michelle will be here at the church between 1130 and 1230. And I will be here between 5 and 6 p.m. If you are able, come during one of those times. It will be like an open house. Just come into the sanctuary and receive ashes. You can spend some time in prayer or light a candle. Some of you may not be able to come in person. You can dip your finger in a bit of water or a bit of olive oil and make a sign of the cross on your hand or on your forehead. We invite you to do one of these two options as a sign of your intention to enter into this time of discernment. And now I invite you to receive the benediction. Return to God with all your hearts. Turn to your neighbor with the compassion of Christ. May the God who makes all things new restore within you a spirit of joy and hope as you go forth this day. Amen.